Hey guys, it's Em. Today I'm going to be doing a video about ferret care, so stay tuned. If you guys are new around here, welcome. I'm Em and this is my channel. Every week I give you a brand new creature feature, which I'm starting the second series of very, very soon, where I basically tell you lots of different cool, interesting facts about a certain species of animal. And I also every now and then do animal care videos as well. This video has been super highly requested and as it's Christmas, I'm sure a lot of you just got your very first ferrets. So I hope this video gives you lots of cool tips on how to keep your ferrets happy and healthy. If you haven't already, remember to hit that subscribe button down below, become part of the creature crew and also remember to leave me a comment down below to let me know if you are a fan of the coat or not a fan of the coat. They said I could be anything, so I became a jacket potato. Are you an aspiring pet YouTuber? After this video, check out my creator interview with Erica Vera over at Beauty and the Vlog to hear how I managed to grow my channel to almost 300,000 members of the Creature Crew in less than a year. A huge thank you to Beauty and the Vlog for helping me get to grips with YouTube as a relatively new person on the platform. Link to the podcast episode is in my description box. Here's some ferret basics for you. A ferret male is called a hob and a ferret female is called a jill. There are also some other words such as a sprite for a Jill who is fixed. But I'm just gonna be referring in this video to males as Hobbs and females as Jills. Number one, if you're considering a ferret or if you already have a ferret, is enclosure. Because you can't have a ferret if you don't have a setup to bring your ferret home to. The enclosure that I'm using is the Furplast Ferret Tower and I bought it from the Furplast official Amazon outlet. I know that it's not one of the enclosures that you tend to find in retail stores, at least I haven't seen it. Um, so over here in the States, if you're looking to have a similar enclosure by Fur Plus, they do also do the um, the XL, which is just one of these units rather than two of them together. Um, but yes, yeah, so this one is the Fur Plus Ferret Tower, which you can find on Amazon. I will link it down below in an affiliate link so you guys can check it out for yourselves. Another enclosure that I like is the Ferret Nation enclosure. The reason why I didn't choose the Ferret Nation enclosure is because I don't find the sides to be high enough. And Dobby and Niffler, as we'll come on to later, do not like to use their litter pan, which means that if they are going to be pooing in a corner, it will literally get stuck on bars. Whereas this over here, here has a plastic rim along the bottom which is really nice and high so if they poo against that it's really easy to use wet wipes and cleaners to actually remove the poo rather than actually having to scrape it off of bars which we had to do with our last enclosure which was a bit of a nightmare. It's also nice when you have an enclosure to use lots of different levels because ferrets will climb. They're not the best climbers um, especially if you're like Niffler. Niffler is not gifted when it comes to climbing at all but Dobby does like to climb and she'll actually climb up these bars to go to another level and that's why they've got lots of hammocks spread throughout their enclosure. Hammock wise I'm using a couple of hammocks which were sent to me by an amazing subscriber whose details I will put now in the video over the top here so thank you so much for sending me these. I believe she actually has an Etsy store which I will also link down in the description box and she sent me some really cool fleece um, little hideaways and hammocks as well. Okay let's take a closer look at Dobby and Niffler's enclosure. This is the top level, there is a second level down here which they can access through this tunnel that goes down to the bottom. They also have their food dish over here. Remember that some ferrets will fight. Um, luckily for me, Dobby and Niffler are very relaxed and they don't actually fight at all. So they're very happy to share. But if you see anyone dominating the food or one of your ferrets seems a little bit chunkier than the other, then there's a good chance that that one is being bullied off their food. So make sure that you have two food bowls if necessary. Um, I also have this water bottle up here. Now, Dobby and Niffler, again, they're very good at sharing this. Um, so if you feel that you might need more than just one, then definitely put that in. Water is absolutely essential for ferrets. Remember, their diet is extremely high in protein, or at least it should be. Um, so that means there's a lot of salt. And given that there's a lot of salt, means that they're going to be very, very thirsty. They must always have a good amount of water in their enclosure at all times. This should be changed out every single day, as well as their food bowls being washed out every day. Uh, down down here they actually have a litter pan, but I do not use it as a litter pan. Dobby and Niffler will never use a litter pan. We have tried the uh, rectangular ones, we've tried the side ones, they just don't like the feeling of, of, of going against them and we've tried all the different corners. So actually the reason that's in the corner there is to prevent them from pooing in that corner because given the fact that there is a litter pan, they will not use it. And I know some people will be angry and saying, well, why don't you take the time to litter train your ferrets? To be honest, I 
don't actually care that they're not litter trained. To me, I'm happy for them to go wherever they want to go. So if they want to use a litter tray, that's fine. If they don't, then that's fine because I know that they use this corner down here, which gets spot cleaned a couple of times a day. Um, yes, we will use a wet wipe to clean that as well. And then down at the bottom here, there is another section to their enclosure, which is for the most part quite bare. Um, you might be wondering why they don't have toys. And the truth is they don't really like toys. Um, they will not play with any toys in their enclosure. They're not like a rat who likes to problem solve. So they spend the majority of their time in their enclosure either playing with each other or asleep. And then down here, this is a bed that I found at I think some kind of discount store with a fleecy throw. They love being in there too. Oh wait, Dobby's coming down the slide. Whee! Hi Dobby! They also get a lot of run in this room as well because this is kind of a ferret room that I'm in. In their room in here, they get to run around in here. It's all ferret proofed and they really love running around in here. But because it's quite cold at the moment, I bring them into the house as well. Like, no joke, you can actually fit a human inside here. Two of my files corrupted where I actually explain my choice of bedding, so here I come to you in voiceover form. Bedding really depends on your personal choice and what your ferrets enjoy. Many people choose to use fleece, but I personally prefer Carefresh. I find it's hygienic and good at eliminating odours. Some people say that it's dusty, but I personally haven't found this. Here's a better look at the bedding that they're using. This is their Carefresh bedding um, with odour stop. Excellent. What do you think, Dobby? Now let's think about actually choosing your ferret. Choosing your ferret. When it comes to choosing ferrets, obviously you want to choose a ferret that's good and healthy. When we actually picked up Dobby, she was the runt of the litter. If you do pick a runt, then it is absolutely likely that they may not live as long as other ferrets. But Dobby is really nice and healthy, thank goodness. In fact, she's a bit of a little terror. Master has presented Dobby with clothes. Dobby is free. When you are looking for a ferret, then make sure they seem really bright and alert. Try picking them up. You want to see that they've got really nice body weight. You don't want to feel too many ribs sticking out and you want to have a ferret that's quite comfortable with being handled. Dobby was quite wriggly when we first got her, but through lots of handling and positive reinforcement, as you can see, she is just the most amazing, lovely ferret. Also look at their coats. Depending on the time of year, their coats might be quite long or quite short. With Dobby, because she lives out here in the porch, area which is quite cold um, she actually has a nice long coat that she's grown in can you see that plush coat whereas if you see her in the summer she looks like a completely different ferret if you plan to keep your ferrets outdoors in a hutch in a shed or in a screened porch don't buy your ferrets in the winter. A ferret which is used to indoor temperatures won't have enough of a winter coat to survive being suddenly placed in cold temperatures. Acclimate your ferrets slowly to outdoor temperatures by keeping them outdoors from the springtime all the way through to winter. Ensure you have an extremely secure enclosure to protect your pets from predators. Also remember to offer more bedding and food in the winter, as well as double checking your water in case it freezes. Elderly and sick ferrets will suffer from the cold, so bring them indoors and keep them there again until the spring. Also look for any crust around the eyes and nose. If you see any discharge coming from there, then it's probably not a healthy animal and I would stay away. If you're in the United States, there are very few people who actually breed ferrets. There are a couple of big breeders who you might already be familiar with and they give you a kind of guarantee that their ferret is going to be healthy. But don't take that for granted. If something just doesn't feel right about the place you're getting your ferret, then just don't buy the ferret. If you can, then try and adopt where possible because you'd be amazed at how many people actually give up their ferrets. Also, pick up that ferret and take a deep whiff because ferrets do have a body smell. Now the body smell is sort of kind of musty and dusty and the way that a dog or a cat has a smell, ferrets also have a smell and you can't get rid of that smell. If you rub a ferret on your clothes, your clothes will smell like ferret. The worst thing you can do is bath your ferret because ferrets have very itchy skin and if you bath your ferret too frequently, you're going to really irritate that skin. If the ferret that you pick up does smell absolutely horrendous in a very pungent way and not in just a delicate musty 
nasty way, then that could be an indication that their diet is poor or that they have some kind of underlying health issue. A lot of people do have that stigma that ferrets do smell and to minimize that smell because you will never eradicate it completely, um, just keep their enclosure clean. Spot clean it every day because it really is their feces and their urine which smells bad. The actual body smell of a ferret once you're used to it doesn't smell bad at all. Are you in my hood? Dobby's in my hood. Also, when you bring home a ferret, realize that you give up rights to absolutely everything because everything you own becomes your ferrets. Yeah. Danny! I'd just like to take a couple of minutes to talk about common ailments. By far, the most common sickness you're gonna come by is chronic diarrhea. Yes, I'm sorry to talk about the poo, but it happens. Ferrets have a very sensitive digestive system and the smallest changes in their diet can really upset that. So if you see that your ferret has very loose stools or diarrhea, like watery diarrhea, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is check for dehydration. So just get the scruff of your ferret, lift up a little bit and then let go. That scruff, once you let go, should go back into the skin really quickly. If it stays up like a little mountain and it takes a long time to go back into place, then your ferret is very dehydrated. As standard, your ferret should have a lot of water anyway because their diet is very high in salt and they can dehydrate quite quickly. But if your ferret is dehydrated, first of all, make sure they have access to a lot of water and if they are severely dehydrated, do take them straight to the vet. Diarrhea in loose stools isn't always a fatal thing. It happens quite regularly. Um, it can be something as simple as licking something on the floor that shouldn't be there and then they get chronic diarrhea. It happens, I speak from experience. The next disease is also very common and sadly ferrets are very affected by this disease. It's called adrenal disease. In very basic terms, adrenal disease is an overproduction of a hormone and that leads to cancer, tumors, etc. Signs of adrenal are being very, very thirsty, more so than usual, like an unquenchable thirst. Um, also, they will lose body condition. So a once happy, healthy, chunky ferret might eventually slim down to being, you know, skin and bones. Um, also patchiness, um, fur patchiness and coats not coming in as well as they should. Depending on where you live, you may have the option to buy a descented ferret or a ferret that is spayed or neutered. Um, here in the United States, typically most ferrets which are sold, unless you are a breeder, are sold already either descented and desexed or at least desexed. If you live in the US, also do some research on the state you live in. A lot of ferrets are deemed exotic pets and therefore require a permit. Here in New Jersey you do require a permit. So if you go to buy a ferret from a pet store or adopt from a shelter, they should hook you up with a permit. But make sure that you're on top of your permits because you can get in a lot of trouble if you're not up to date with your permits. I believe it's also a legal requirement if you're actually selling ferrets to sell them desexed, which means that they are not able to reproduce. This is in theory to keep the population of unwanted ferrets down. Of course if you're in the United Kingdom or in Europe in general, then you will have the option to buy an intact ferret. Just remember, if you do buy or adopt a ferret which does have everything intact, it's not desex, they can have the ability to reproduce. Jills, if you're buying them intact, so they haven't been desexed, just remember that if they come into season, which they will at some point if they are intact, they require to be brought out of season. If you keep your ferret Jill in season, she can die. A lot of people actually keep vasectomized hobs around. This means that they're not castrated, they actually have the ability still to mate with a female, they have that drive and desire to mate with a female, but it means that in most cases that a female will not be able to have a litter from a vasectomized hob. If you have a female that has come into season, in the UK we have something called a Jill Jab, which is what they give to ferrets to bring them out of season. If you're not sure whether or not your ferret is in season, go straight to the vet because they may be able Able to advise you on what to do. On the subject of males and females, I've found that females tend to be a little bit more on the go and a little bit more um, energetic and males tend to take it a little bit more easy and laid back. If you're planning on taking your ferrets outside, it's a good thing to remember that they can catch distemper. So if you're planning on taking them outdoors, make sure that you go for your courses of jabs to make sure they can't catch distemper. These will have to be updated every single year, so make sure that you go for your boosters to make sure they 
they can still go outside and not catch distemper. If you are going to take your ferrets outside, which is a great thing to do when the weather is nice and warm, just look out for predators because here where we are in New Jersey, we have a lot of birds of prey and if I took Dobby and Niffler outside, I can be certain that there's going to be at least one bird of prey nearby who can spot them with their BDI. So do keep an eye on your ferret and also remember that not everybody who is going to be in the park potentially wants to see a ferret or is going to be friendly about them. So I think it's best just to keep them somewhere nice and private like your own backyard but also just make sure that you always keep them under supervision. Don't let them go roaming for 10 minutes and then go and find them because they could get lost and they don't have a homing instinct. Now onto the subject of diet and this is something which a lot of people are unanimously agreed on and that is that raw food is absolutely the best thing for your ferrets and I completely stand by that. My old ferret bear was probably the healthiest ferret I've ever seen. He was actually raised to be a hunter so he was a hunting ferret initially um, before he got lazy and then was rehomed to me but his job was to hunt rabbit for people to consume. So if you don't live in an area with a butcher who can provide you with rabbit or pheasant or quail, then I would suggest raw food diets from Waisong. Waisong is probably the only manufactured ferret food that I've found that I actually enjoy giving my ferrets because it's actually got a very high percentage of protein. So if I haven't got any raw foods in the house or my ferrets won't take, which is an issue with these two because they're still being converted onto raw food. So as a staple diet, what Dobby and Niffler have is this. It's the Ferret Epigen 90 from Waisong and it's got a really high percentage of protein protein and it's starch free as well. So I'm very happy with this and as you can see my ferret's coats have come in beautifully and this is what I'm helping to assist them on going on to a raw food diet. This is a rabbit formula but Waisong also have quail, chicken and I think turkey. I'm not entirely sure, I'll have to go back over that, but they've got lots of different raw food diets which already come pre-packaged and they're freeze-dried so it kind of locks in all the goodness and you can basically just add warm water, let it sit for 15 minutes and it's a nice gravy that you can pour onto your ferret's food. So this is the rabbit formula for ferrets and I'm really excited to come onto this one because eventually I would like to move Dobby and Niffler over almost exclusively to pheasant, quail and rabbit. I know that some people will say, well I'm really interested in giving my obligate carnivore um, a meat diet but can't I just use chicken? Not exactly because chicken doesn't have that many vitamins for ferrets, um, especially uh, chicken breast. If you fed a ferret nothing but chicken breast, they would get very, very sick. There's little to no nutrients in chicken breast for a lot of ferrets. So make sure that you're alternating those meats. And if your ferret won't take, then just introduce it very, very slowly. Maybe starting off with like some chicken thighs um, and also being very careful to remove any small bones because obviously these can pierce their gums. My ferrets are doing really well on the regular Waisong Epigen 90 dry food, um, super high in protein, and just already looking at this uh, new uh, diet, which is basically a freeze-dried raw diet, um, it's already looking really good, crude protein minimum 44%. Um, typically speaking, if you're going to be feeding a dry food, the minimum requirement for protein is at least 36%, so I'm very happy with 44%, crude fat 36%, crude fiber 0.5, that's excellent, moisture is 4%, that's great. Um, so we're looking at chicken, chicken and organs, ground chicken, bone, natural flavor, taurine. Taurine is fantastic. Um, can you see just there that it has taurine? Ferrets can't produce their own taurine. So it's great that Waisong Foods already have taurine um, in the foods. Um, if you are not on a food at the moment which has added taurine, something else that you can add to their diet to boost their taurine is like a vitamin ferret paste. Um, let me get you one to see right now. This is one example of ferret vitamin paste. It's actually the Marshall one, but my ferrets don't like this one. Um, the way that it looks, on the inside is it's a bit sort of um, like gooey. Um, my ferrets have enjoyed another uh, ferret paste in the past which was one I bought in the UK. I'll insert the picture of it somewhere so you guys can see. Um, but yes, this one they do not like. It's a bit too gelatinous for them. Um, so the one that I used before was more malty um, and that had added taurine. But yes, if your ferrets will take some kind of vitamin paste with added taurine then that's always a bonus. Alrighty, let's look inside. This is what the diet looks like on the inside. Remember, it is freeze-dried. We do have to rehydrate this food, so this is not what it should look like going into your ferret's food. You don't just 
take this food and put it in, you actually have to add, um, I believe it's a fifth cup of water to the diet. So let me mix them up and then we're gonna mix it in with Dobby and Niffler's regular diet. And this should slowly switch them over to a more raw diet. Eventually my goal is to have them on a completely raw diet, but this is a good first step. All right, I've added just a little bit in there because this is their first time eating the raw food diet mix from my song. So I'm going to chop this up. Oh look, we can see like some, some blood or some organ in there. That's good. I know then that that means that it's actually coming from a real animal. Um, and you know, for anyone who does get upset by this, just remember that ferrets are obligate carnivores. You can't put them on any kind of plant-based diet because they will literally die. Um, uh, that's not an exaggeration. It's not me saying that they just prefer meat. They absolutely require meat in their diet. So this is a good first step towards getting Dobby and Niffler used to actually having a bit more meat in their diet. I do have to let this sit for about 15 minutes before it's ready to go into their regular food um, and I also don't want to serve it cold either but I'm not going to do the chunks too large I'm going to actually break it down a little bit more just so the very first time they can get used to having the flavor mixing in with their regular food rather than encountering a new texture which they might not like. This mixture here is how the food looks after I've let the water sit with it for a little while but I have been mashing it up as well. With this diet what you're actually supposed to do is pour some out and actually allow the water to soak in so you get larger meaty chunks, smaller meaty chunks but given that this is Dobby and Niffler's very first time with this food I'm going to be giving it to them as more of a runny paste so they can get used to the flavour and then as time goes on I can gradually build up to giving them the big chunks as well. Alright so that's been done. Um, as you you can see it's kind of sunk to the bottom of their bowl but that's not an issue Dobby and Niffler will make their way through this and they'll get a sort of taste for the flavor and then as the days go on I will be adding more of the meat to their diet do you want some new food oh we are always so confused looking Niffler is just the sweetest baby boy but he's he's not the smartest here let me give him his new food try your food sausage Thank you so much to everyone at Ysong who sent Dobby and Niffler lots of different diets to try. We'll be trying each and every one of these in turn and we will be vlogging the process. So in summary, ferrets can make an amazing pet for the right family. Just make sure you do your research and if you're interested, try considering two or more ferrets as well because they're always going to be more fun and a lot happier if they're kept in pairs or more. Take your time in choosing the right ferrets for you because they all have their own distinct personalities. Dobby has no master. And don't be afraid to ask questions. So if you have a question, pop it in the comment section below and either myself or someone else will try and get back to you as soon as possible to answer your ferret question. If you need some more information or you'd like to be part of a support group, you can definitely check out different places online such as on Facebook. Type ferret groups into um, Facebook and see which ones return and see if you can become part of a ferret group where you can ask questions at your leisure and have lots of knowledgeable people get back to you as well. If you think that I might have actually missed out any points then please feel free to add them below it's quite impossible to fit everything in one video so please help each other out down in the comment section below and thank you so much for being here remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't and also join the creature crew yes Mwah. don't let ferrets near your nose they might nip your nose just so you know thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you in another video very very soon bye Dobby is free.